I'd like to thank the Minister for coming to the Shannon uh, this afternoon. As Minister Harris will know, the long-range weather forecast has estimated that severe flooding will hit the west of Ireland in the coming days, and in particular Galway City. Water heights are estimated to rise to 20 feet, and that's much higher, for example, than the key wall at the Spanish Arch in Galway City. And any such high tides undoubtedly will put at risk um, areas of the city in close proximity to the promenade in Salt Hill, the Clada, and businesses and uh, locals are very concerned about the impact that this will have. As you will recall, Minister, on the last occasion, high tides caused enormous water damage in Galway. And while it's good to see that the Galway City Council has indicated that their new aqua, aqua dam will be deployed at the Spanish Arch in order to alleviate matters, if bad weather accompanies the flooding, that might not be sufficient to prevent uh, the repeat of previous flooding. And in that light, Minister, I would ask you to outline where the National Flood Risk Management Programme now stands. I understand that there are um, public meetings taking place uh, to develop a regional plan, uh, but there's a great need that these plans are to be finalised and that the necessary funding will be put in place. And secondly, I would ask you on behalf of the government to commit to providing whatever funding will be required for remedial and repair work should the forecasted floods uh, become a reality in Galway in the West. And finally, um, would it be possible to get an, a present state of affairs with regard to the Clare River in Clare Galway? Um, there was severe flooding there, as you are well aware, Minister, back in, in uh, almost six years ago now, on the 21st of November. Um, and I realise that there have been lawyers involved with regard to the progress of the, of the works on the Clare River. Um, but really, there are many homes and people there who cannot sell their homes. They cannot get insurance um, because of the, the, the delays of this flood relief work. And I would just ask you to update uh, the House with regard to the state of those works. Thank you, Minister. And Tara. Thank you very much, Jacob Herlock. And I want to thank um, Senator Knoxon um, for giving me the opportunity to address the Shannon in relation to these matters uh, this afternoon. The Office of Public Works, the OPW, has arrangements in place with consultants to provide a tidal and storm surge forecasting service for the coast of Ireland to local authorities and indeed to other relevant stakeholders during the autumn and the winter period. This service is now operating for the 2015 to 2016 autumn and winter period. This service is provided twice daily and results are presented via a project website, password restricted, in the form of a surge, astronomical tide and total water level time series prediction approximately 65 hours in advance. So it is providing advanced information to local authorities. The service currently provides a low resolution storm surge, storm surge forecast via website at 15 locations around the national coastline together with a high resolution forecast in Dundalk Bay, Galway Bay, Wexford Harbour, Cork Harbour and the Shannon Estuary. High tide advisory HTA notices are issued from time to time as deemed necessary by the OPW during periods of anticipated combined high tides and storm surge. The OPW is monitoring closely the current surge forecast for the upcoming high astronomical tides expected between Saturday the 26th of September and Friday the 2nd of October and will issue a high tide advisory notice if deemed necessary in the event of anticipated coastal flood risk. Following the severe weather from the 13th of December 2013 to the 6th of January 2014 which caused widespread damage across the southern and western seaboards of this country the government decided on the 11th of February 2014 to make available up to 69.5 million euro based on estimates provided for repair works by local authorities for a programme of repair and remediation works to be carried out by those local authorities to roads, coastal protection and flood defences and other public infrastructure damaged in those storms. Of the total amount being available, up to 19.6 million was made available via the Office of Public Works for the repair of damaged coastal protection and flood defence infrastructure. A further 48.7 million was made available through other government departments for restoration of damaged roads, local authority infrastructure, tourism, amenity and community infrastructure and piers and harbours, including those owned by the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine, and for other transport infrastructure including Irish Rail, Shannon Airport and the Irish Coast Guard. A further 1.2 million was made available for repair to the OPW's own infrastructure. The Department of the Environment, Community and Local Government wrote to all of the affected local authorities indicating, based on the estimates submitted to them by, by them to the Department, that the amounts being made available to the Council to undertake the necessary repair works, including the amounts available via the OPW in respect of the cost of repairs to damage coastal protection and flood defence infrastructure in the country. 
Local authority submitted programmes of works to the Department of the Environment and other government departments and the OPW indicating how they propose to spend the allocation made available to them. The OPW has also written to local authorities indicating that in order to assist them in a practical way and to avoid any potential cash flow issues, it would consider requests for advanced funding of up to 80% where a contract for works had been made. Of the 19.6 million made available via the OPW, approximately 13.7 million was allocated to the local authorities in the counties of Clare, Galway and Mayo, reflecting the severe damage done in those counties. To date, the local authorities have drawn down over 8.6 million of the full allocation of 19.6 million available for, to them from the OPW. The allocation is expected to be fully drawn down by the end of this year. A large number of the projects included in the programme of work submitted to the local authorities uh, are now completed. The Irish Coastal Protection Strategy Study has surveyed and assessed the coastal erosion and flood risk along the entire national coastline, and this information is available to all local authorities to enable them to develop appropriate plans and strategies for the sustainable management of the coastline in their counties, including the identification, prioritisation, and subject to the availability of resources, the implementation of coastal protection works, both of a structural and non-structural nature. This office has provided funding to Clare, Galway, Louth, Sligo and Wexford for coastal risk management studies of main at-risk areas identified by these counties. It must be emphasised that the management of problems of coastal protection in any particular area is first and foremost a matter for the relevant local authority. With regard to the question of upgrading existing built defences or constructing new defences, this would depend primarily on the Council's assessment of the measures that would be appropriate at a particular location. Local authorities must assess the problem in the first instance, and if it's considered that specific measures and risks and works rather are required, it's open to them to apply for funding to deal with coastal protection works under the Office of Public Works Minor Flood Mitigation Works and Coastal Protection Scheme. In addition to the storm damage repair funding, which is a one-off measure to reinstate built coastal defences to their pre-storm condition, the OPW operates a capital works programme for the provision of flood defences nationally. In the six years from 2009 to 2014, the OPW has expended over €250 million Euro of taxpayers' money on the programme on the development and implementation of major flood relief schemes, the Catchment Flood Risk Assessment and Management Programme and the Minor Flood Mitigation and Coastal Protection Work Programmes. In addition to the Capital Works Programme, we also carry out a maintenance programme on all arterial drainage schemes. Included in the major flood relief schemes being advanced are coastal schemes at Skibbereen and Clonakilty. The OPW is currently undertaking, as the Senator says, the National Catchment Flood Risk Assessment and Management Programme, which is the principal vehicle for implementing the EU Floods Directive and forms the strategic focus of national flood policy. Engineering consultants have been appointed to implement the programme through six regional studies. Local authorities and other stakeholders are also involved in partnership with the OPW on steering groups and progress groups across the six study areas. This programme, which is vast, is focusing on 300 areas for further assessment, including 90 coastal areas, involves the production of predictive flood risk and hazard mapping for each location, the development of preliminary flood risk management options and the production of flood risk management plans. Under the programme, the draft maps have been produced, uh, are online already for all to see, and were subject of a programme of local consultation which concluded in April of this year. The flood maps will be finalised following a national consultation scheduled for late 2015. A programme of local public consultation on the preliminary flood risk management options is underway. Further information is available on cfram.ie. As part of CFRAM, a condition survey of flood defence assets is being undertaken for entry into a flood defence database. I might also make this point in the context of capital. This will require significant investment of possibly up to a billion euro um, over 10 years. As a country, we currently spend about 42 million euro a year on flood mitigation measures. In fairness to the last government and this government, that is a level that has been maintained through difficult years. We now need to see that seriously increase so we can deliver the Seafront programme. But the programme is making significant progress and we expect by the spring of next year to be rolling out the actual solutions um, to those 300 areas where there are possible solutions. Um, in terms of the events um, that may, may happen in, in Galway in relation to astronomical tides, we'll continue to closely monitor them and keep in touch with the Senator in relation to that. I'll update you on Claire Galway in, in the next round. Thank you, Minister. Uh, uh, thank you, Minister, for your comprehensive reply. And, uh, I look forward to the National Flood Risk Management Programme, I suppose, continuing its work. And so it really, really need to have that, that long-term plan put in place. And as you say, this will take, I suppose, a multi-annual appro approach and continual investment uh, so that we can protect our coastline for um, events that have happened in the past. And, uh, Minister, would you have an update on the Clare River um, with regard to where that stands? Because, as I say, many um, houses and many people living in the Clare Galway area really are at a loss with regard to when this is going to happen. And they're looking for a date with regard to when these works can, can proceed. Many of them can't get insurance on their houses 
houses. They can't sell their houses at the moment. Um, and I would appreciate if you could give an update here today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, agree with the, I agree with the Senator that we do need a national plan. And when CFRAM is concluded for the first time in the history of the state, we will have a national flood mapping exercise. But more than just mapping the problem, we'll also have structural solutions where they exist for each of the problems. That will provide a roadmap uh, for this government and for any future governments to deliver once and for all on the major infrastructural projects that need to be delivered in relation to flood mitigation. Um, also, though, you've touched on the issue of flood insurance. There are a range of issues related to flooding that fall well outside the remit of the Office of Public Works. Flood forecasting in the Department of the Environment, uh, flood insurance, which is the responsibility of the Department of Finance in terms of insurance policies. So I've reconvened the interdepartmental group, um, which brings together all the departments who have responsibility for various elements of what I call the whole of government approach we need to take, and that is due to report to Cabinet uh, early next year. In relation to Clare Galway, um, I sense and share the frustration of residents in your, in your part of the country. Um, the OPW has committed to fully funding this scheme. That funding is in our expenditure profiles up to 2017. As you may be aware, under a different European directive, once we carry out an environmental impact statement and the other necessary um, statutory processes, that now has to be um, independently reviewed by the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform. That's where that's at. I hope it doesn't take much longer. Um, I expect that works can, can start the end of this year, early next year, and obviously I, I'm very much aware that residents want them to start as quickly as possible. But from an OPW perspective, the funding is fully in place and is in our profiles right out to 2017. Thank you, Minister. Uh, second motion.